Hello there, welcome to a drive-by code session. Uh, this is going to be a continuation of the series uh, we've been making about building programming languages. Uh, this is going to be um, the third in the series of introducing you to the parser generator called NearlyJS. Um, uh, if you haven't seen the first two, in which uh, YKit and I show you how to build a JSON parser or a partial JSON parser, um, then you should check the parts one and two first before continuing on with watching this one. Uh, so go there now, watch them and come back, I'll wait. Okay, so uh, in this episode, uh, we're going to show you how to parse white space or how to deal with white space in your parser. Uh, let me show you where we're at right now first. So at this point, we have a parser which was written using this grammar syntax. So each one of these production, these things is called a production rule. And, um, and each of the production rules, some, some of them are compound production rules, like the ones with an OR operator. This is saying a value can be derived from a number, a boolean, a minor, whatever that is, a string or an array. And each one of these rules has a sort of like a transformer that transforms the input that was matched to the the sort of representation, the object representation that you want to use. Um, and what you do with this grammar is when you have it, you run this little um, command that we've set up uh, to compile this grammar into a JavaScript file, like so. And then, and then you utilize it in this way by writing a little script to wire it up together. And now we're able to parse this JSON input here. So I'll run this parse.js file and it says parse success. And the result of parse is this, which is a JSON representation, not JSON representation, the JavaScript representation of this JSON input here. Uh, the thing we're going to tackle now is adding the ability to handle white spaces, which currently does not exist. So, so what we want basically is to allow the input to have white space like so. So that, for example, we simplify this input a little bit here. Um, this is an array still, even though it's got some additional white space here and in the middle. Uh, between the numbers, uh, between the elements of the array, etc. So how do we do this? So uh, the the author of Nearly, his name is Koch. Um, he has written up this article called How Do Grammar Good? And one of the things he says in the article is that uh, by convention, um, what he likes to do, uh, or the, I guess the community of the nearly JS users, what they like to do is use a single underscore to mean optional white space and a double underscore to mean mandatory white space, and which makes it easy to write rules like this. So that's what we're going to do. Um, so let's see. Again, uh, I will mention that uh, props to WhiteKit. WhiteKit is the one that actually writing this code. I'm just going to replay that replay this and uh, explain what he did. So now we're going to define, I thought we were going to define, oh, let me look at this replay. Okay. Um, so now we're going to add this rule that defines this optional white space symbol here. Let me make the font slightly bigger. Okay, so this is the symbol that means optional white space and we're going to say it's defined as a character class that matches a white space or tabs, matches either white spaces or tabs. Uh, this star, as you people who know regular expressions know, uh, this guy here 
that means zero or more occurrences of. So so optional white space is zero or more occurrences of either white uh, spaces or or tabs. Simple. And then we're gonna sprinkle the optional white space wherever we see fit here. So the first thing I'll say is in the top level input, that's this. You can have op, uh, optional white space around the top level input, uh, around the value that represents the top level input. So I put uh, some optional white space here and here. One thing to note is that once you once we added this optional white space, this this transformer no longer works as expected because of what we have done effectively is take something that used to be simply one uh, one right hand side symbol to something that is now three right hand side symbols, and which means um, when the data is marshaled. Uh, the transformer will get an array that has three things in it instead of one. Well, this ID function is expecting one symbol. So how do we fix that? Um, well, well, we'll have to write the longhand for this, right? Right, uh, arrow function that takes in the data, which will receive, an, again, it will receive uh, this array here that has three elements in it. And I'll grab the middle one because this is zero, this is one, this is two. The one we want is index one here. Okay. Um, so that should do it for input. Another place we want to sprinkle in these white spaces is uh, at the beginning of the array, right after the, the opening bracket, and also right after, right before the closing bracket. Um, that's gonna break this transformer too by the way uh, another another thing we another place we added is in between the brackets for an empty array that's easy uh, and another place we want to add it is right before the comma that separates array items and right after it as well so I think that's all of them we don't uh, this JSON parser currently does not support object notation um, that is meant to be left as a homework assignment for you, the viewer. <laughs> okay, uh, so so now that we've made a change to the grammar, uh, we regenerate the parser, and let's run this script again. Oops, I mistakenly typed in the replay terminal again. How dare me. Um, Okay, so now we parse success, but we're not getting the value we expected. This is clearly, this is supposed to be an array that has a one and a two in it. Uh, we have an array with an empty string in it. So clearly, WhiteKit has messed that up. Um, one obvious thing that was must have been wrong <laughs> is that uh, the this array has increased in its size by two due to these additional of these white space symbols. So that must be a problem. So we need to fix this. So basically, again, to visualize this for you, this is now an array of five symbols and they're indexed as follows. Whereas previously, before adding these white spaces, they this array only had three symbols. Now, so now, the thing we want in here is actually index two. So, white kit's gonna fix that. There we go. Uh, okay, he regenerates the parser, and now it fixed it. Uh, I think he also needs to fix this one because we added white space here also. Um, he didn't fix it though. Okay, I think that's a problem. Zero, one, two, three, four. Oh, he did fix it. He changed this to a four. Okay, so he fixed this one as well. So now uh, we've got white spaces working. Um, we can put them in before the input. Any number of them. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna try to run this code myself. 
there it still works even though there's white space here in at the beginning of the input and also at the end of the input and if there's white space before the closing bracket or in between the commas oh let me do some taps too so you can have white space in all these places and the parser still works so the parser is able to uh, gracefully handle these white spaces now very cool so that's that's um, white spaces with nearly um, and uh, I'm gonna bring this episode to a close uh, next episode will be about um, correctly parsing strings uh, with with escape code that allows you to have double quotes in your string for example and also things like uh, new lines and tab characters in the string Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.